Seraphon? No, it's Lizard Man. Welcome back to Envel of Doom Miniatures. My name is Deets and boy oh boy do I have a batch paint for you guys today. Not many minis hit me hard in the nostalgia section of my brain quite like the Lizard Men. I got my hands on this box of 10 Lizard Men skinks a little while back and I've been itching to get some paint on them for two reasons. And the first reason is because I've been watching Ben from Wizards and Whiskey paint up this amazing blue Lizard Men army. It's a classic army, it just looks so goddamn good and I want to give it a try. And the second reason is because this is the first army I laid my eyes on and my hands on when I was about 10, 11 or 12 years old. And back in the day when I was a young lad, I actually got to play a few games with these skinks. I was allowed to play with the skinks while my mate played with the Saurus and we played another person with the Empire and I think we got flogged. But anyway, that does not matter. So yeah, these little monopose guys have a very special place in my heart, so I'm very excited to paint them for you today. So that's enough gas bagging, let's get straight into it. Now in this box, you're actually meant to get five of one sculpt and five of the other sculpt, and I unfortunately got seven of one sculpt and three of the other, so I kind of got duped there, but that doesn't matter because I already got the paints out and we're just gonna paint these guys anyway. And as this is another batch paint, kill me now, I'm gonna do the layer, wash, and highlight approach because I find this keeps it consistent across all minis. The look will stay consistent. Sometimes when I do paint them separately, I tend to veer off and I don't get the right color mixture and stuff like that. So we will be sticking to this method today. To kick things off, I throw down some Temple Guard Blue as my base color all over. Now I was tossing up keeping these guys close to the box art and making them green, but when I think Lizard Men, I think Turquoise Blue, and I wanted to give this color a crack as I've never really attempted it before. For the Skink's little head frill, I want to make it pop off the blue, so I use some Evil Sun Scarlet all over and be super careful not to get any on the blue. I'm thinking a yellow would tie nicely into these two colors, so on the underbelly, I apply some Zemesi Desert as a base. Usually, I would use bronze flesh tone, but today I'm gonna to try something new. Now, there are a few leathery parts on these little fellas, so I'm gonna apply some Doomble Brown all over the skirts and the quivers, and then some Scrag Brown all over the straps. These skinks are also carrying some little rags, and I hit these with some Warpstone Glow. Some of these guys are also clutching little daggers, and I want these to look like dinosaur teeth, so I cover them with some Zandri dust. And last up for the layers, I throw in some Gehenna's gold to their little bangles and the hilt of their daggers. So as you can tell, the layers have gone on pretty quickly and easily, and that's the beauty of these old Monopose minis, and that's where I, I really love them. I do find with the newer minis, there's a lot more detail, and they take a lot more time to paint. Time for the washes, and I'm going to put some Frost Heart all over the Temple Guard Blue. This was a bit of an experiment, and in hindsight, I probably didn't have to do this, but when it dried, it did darken up the recesses just a little bit, and that's what I was after anyway. I slapped down some Seraphim Sepia straight out of the pot, all over the Zemesi Desert, making sure it pulls in the recesses just nicely. To keep the head frill vibrant, I use a wash of watered down Baal Red. A good coat of Agrax Earthshade goes all over the leathers, and today I'm also going to use it on the greens to save some time. Even though these guys are pretty simple, there are a few of them to get through, so I'll take as many shortcuts as I can. And last up for the washes, I use some Gulliman Flesh all over the golds. Now I don't know why, but putting washes on minis is my favorite step. I feel like it enriches the color, and you can kind of see where it's kind of heading. Now last week, if you're sitting around wondering where's Anvil of Doom's latest video, it's actually up on my Patreon as a Patreon exclusive episode. I painted up a 90 Space Marine in a vibrant Crimson Fist color scheme. So if you're into that sort of thing and want to support the channel, head on over to my Patreon and sign up today. Link is in the bio. But anyway, let's get back into it. It's time to get layering and bring these little Lustrian lizards to life. I want to keep these guys super vibrant, so I go back over quickly with some Temple Guard Blue to all the raised areas. Then. I mix in one part Temple Guard Blue to one part Baharoth Blue for the first highlight. When that's all down, it's time for some pure Baharoth Blue and I apply this to less of an area. And to get that stark highlight, I mix in some Blue Horror to the Baharoth Blue and apply this to the upward facing areas. I make sure this highlight is as skinny as possible. I also add a small amount of Blue Horror just to the tips of each area. So from time to time, people do ask me how long it takes to paint minis, and just this blue highlight scheme alone took me five and a half hours, so this thing was a blowout. For the red frill, I'm going to try and make this look like a tropical mango and lychee fruit juice, so I use a mix of Evil Suns and Wild Rider Red and just highlight that raised area first. Then I use some pure Wild Rider Red to the last half of the frill, being careful to follow the edges. Then I slap on a little bit of orange flare to the ends, and for that final punch and to seal the tropical fruit drink deal, I use a mix of orange flare and Uriel yellow. 
Let's make this yellow belly glow, and I'm gonna go back over each of the raised areas with a mix of Zemesi Desert and Uriel Yellow, and again, I don't wanna get this in any of the recesses, so I just take my time. Once I'm happy with that, I use some pure Uriel Yellow to a little bit less of an area, and then I mix in Dawn Yellow to this for a top facing highlight. I also do a small dot highlight of pure Dawn Yellow here and there where it needs it. As I was painting these guys, I did notice that the two sculpts were actually quite different in look. They might have been done by two different artists, or maybe they were done in two different times. I don't know, but if you know who sculpted them, let me know down in the comments below. Moving on now to the leathers, and I use my trusty old recipe and throw down some Doombull Brown, and then mix in small amounts of Scrag Brown and build up these highlights. I then use some Zemesi Desert as an edge highlight to finish. Super simple stuff and it does the job well. Now as these old minis are quite small compared to modern minis, I do find that adding little scratches here and there or little patterns or even making a strap look like a rope is a great way to add points of interest. And to do this I just use a base of Scrag Brown and then just add little dots of bone white over the top of it. It just gives it this little rope like look. For the green cloths I go back over some Warpstone Glow and then mix in small amounts of Moot Green to build up that highlight. Once that's all done I finish with an edge highlight of pure Moot Green. Now I was a little bit worried that the wash of Agrax I put on earlier would throw the green off a little but it's all good it worked out fine. Using some Wraithbone I then clean up the bows. Then I mix up one part skeleton horde to three parts contrast medium and slap this over for a really nice bone look. And to finish up I go over the gold with some more Gehenna's gold and then highlight with polished gold. I usually try to save my true metallic metals for last so I don't have to change my water because I'm super lazy. And that's pretty much it my dudes, I fixed up a few little things here and there. I gave them a goblin green base that would fit in with the Lustrian rainforest and here they are. 10 5th edition Lizard Men Skinks. Thanks so much for watching my dudes. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Now with the launch of the Old World, I understand that a lot of these armies won't be fully supported moving forward. But I think it's really important to keep painting these, keep playing with these, just to show GW that there might be some sort of a demand there. Now on this channel, I'm gonna make sure I keep painting these armies because I do feel they're quite special. They do fit in with the old world setting and they should really be there. So there's gonna be a few videos on this channel dedicated to these armies. And last up, I wanna say a massive thank you to my Patreons. Thank you so much for the support day in and day out. You're a bunch of legends. But anyway, guys, take it easy. I'll see you all next time. Cheers.